May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to Charlie Kirk debate radical feminist on what is a woman. So without further ado, let's get started. And you said earlier, your, your boyfriend, you said he's, well, he's not conservative, but he's liberal and yeah. you're much further left, you're mm -hmm. leftist. Um, and you said you would, you know, when it comes to perhaps people, you would be friends with someone who's maybe more conservative, so you can shift them more left. I said that uh, are tongue you in cheek, but yeah. Oh, you said that, uh, well, I was gonna ask, are you, have you shifted your boyfriend no, more I left? Wish. <laughs> okay, so he's pretty firm in his he's, liberalism. He's firmly planted in his filthy, filthy liberalism, but I yeah, love okay. him in spite of that. I so. see, okay, <laughs> got it. But we align on a lot of social issues, so if we wanna like take, create a dichotomy of like social and then economic issues, I feel like the economic issues is primarily where we mm. have disagreement. Okay. And the social issues th those tend to be I feel like the most polarizing and contentious so if mm -hmm. we had more disagreement there we probably would not be able to be in a relationship together harmoniously so okay I see but friends yeah I'm open to radicalizing them sure okay got it <laughs> got it so who here I'm curious who here considers themselves a feminist maybe just show of hands are you a feminist I don't that's it just Aaron <laughs> and Pixie Molly? Yeah, Molly a little bit okay all right uh, so Charlie, we've got some feminists here. What do you think of uh, what do you think of feminism? I want them to define the term first because there's no use in me sure, sure. giving thoughts on a ad abstract concept. So, sure. so uh, what's, I'm, I'm all yours. What's your sense? How do you define feminism? Feminism is just simply the advocacy of equality, both social, political, economic, on the basis of all genders everywhere. So that's what feminism is to me. Do you concur? I concur. Do you concur? Concurred. Okay. Okay. So you want me to do you, thought do on you that? Do you agree or? with their definition of feminism? Um, she. I mean, that would probably be the most agreed upon definition. Mm, um, that's true. So I do believe in equality under the law. Obviously, I believe in equality for representation or enfranchisement to be able to vote. Obviously, um, but you said economic equality. That that's interesting. Do you think that female models and male models should be paid the same by law? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we should make female actresses and models pay, be paid less because they get they earn about twenty times more than men. I think when so you get women to, would get a pay cut. You're okay I think with when that? it comes to creative fields like that, it's going to be very difficult to look at it on the basis of like sex or gender, how you would pay somebody, because that's going to have so many more factors and simply that. But if we're talking about equal economic opportunities, like for example, should like a man and woman doing the exact same position at a corporate office be paid the same if they're doing the same amount of work? Then well, it yes. Depend, depends on what they study. Depends how long they've been there. It depends mm -hmm. if they're equally as good at the job. It depends but how all, all else being Equal. I'm saying if all of Hold those on. things are equal, can we at least agree they should be yeah, paid that's the already, same? That's already the law. So you're not allowed to discriminate based on gender or sex based on a law passed in the 1970s. Right, yeah. However, what is now being tried to be passed through other movements is to try to swoop in and say, regardless of qualifications, how often you ask for a raise. So I'll ask a question. Um, why, why do you think, for example, the average male, it looks as if they earn more than an average woman in a city? Is it because of sexism or other factors? I think sometimes implicit bias can be one factor among many, but like all the things that you mentioned earlier, different qualifications, different yeah. uh, business acumen, skills, um, work output, numbers of hours work could all be things that impact pay. Right. So and like studies that like focus on the gaps between men and women like do make, make note of these differences. <laughs> Skiz Tech, thanks for the gift of 100 subs. Uh, Charlie, do you have a yeah. response? Uh, no, I, I hear that. I do want to actually get back to even more of a fundamental question, and I'm sorry mm -hmm. I didn't ask this. Sure. What is a woman? Oh. A woman is somebody who presents as our social conception of womanhood so and you, acts in such a way. So, Pixie, just can you answer that question without using the word woman or womanhood? <laughs> it's because basically it would be a functional definition. So, as a society, we have an understanding of what woman is. What is a man? Yeah, that's basically. I am a man. <laughs> well then. <laughs> can you elaborate? X, X, Y chromosomes. Okay, but the problem with that is that I didn't check your chromosomes before coming in here <laughs> and calling you a man, and you didn't check my chromosomes before coming in here. Or and genitals. Or genitals, <laughs> calling me a woman. So let me let me just 
play this out. So first of all, you can't give me a definition without using the word woman. That's a functional definition. Yeah, sure. Do you know okay. what functional definitions yeah, I, are? I'm, I'm very well aware. And you should have a functional definition for the most important question in civilization, no. right? Well, the point know. of a functional definition, functional definitions are a definition that is by the function of something. So like, for example, um, no, there's an objective one equals definition. one is like a, like fun one is a function of one. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I do. So then can you give me an objective, a functional, utilitarian, any sort of biological definition of what a woman is? Because how, how can we debate feminism if we can't agree what a woman is? I don't, I would even, like, I feel like Pixie's definition absolutely satisfies the definition of what constitutes womanhood, but okay. I would define it only slightly differently, which is that it's a person who performs a set of social roles that are typically associated with, um, with feminine characteristics, but not necessarily, because there are even cis women who fall outside of this, and we still consider them women nonetheless, like butch lesbians, for example, are women that exhibit very masculine characteristics, but nonetheless, society understands them to be women, so. I find cis to be a very offensive word, by the way. I don't know mm -hmm. how you feel about the cis, cis I don't, men, I don't, cis I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, think it's hate speech, to be honest. I didn't mean to trigger you, Brian. As, I would have given a you a trigger warning before if so I had known. So do you think anyone can become a woman? Yep, but not anyone will. Okay, so then at what point do they become a woman? It will depend on where they are in their gender transition for the does most it, part. Does it require drugs to become a woman? No. Personally, I think it's a mindset. It's a, it's a spiritual oh. energy. It's, it's the vibe okay. that you give off. You know, like the the vibe. Um, before we continue on, I want to just give everyone an opportunity yeah, to sure, answer Charlie. Sure, no, totally fine to answer Charlie's question. I know you two had already answered. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is a woman? Starting with you, we'll go around the table. Go ahead. Um, ooh, can you um, skip me? <laughs> We'll come back to her. I, I am a woman. That's, yeah. a, that's the best answer. That's the one that Katanji <laughs> Brown-Jackson should have given in front of the Senate. So come back to you? Or? Yeah, come back to me. Come back to me. Let me sure, okay. Go ahead. Same. I'm like, I'm a woman. What is know. a woman? <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> what about you? Can I have you tilt your mic down just yeah, a tad? Of Perfect. Go ahead. Right there. Yeah. Um, I'm a woman, um, but I also do think that um, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman um and that's that's that i mean periodically it's someone who's born with a womb but this generation obviously has proven that people men can turn into women um so i'm not discluding that i still think that they should be um perceived as what they're um portraying themselves as but technically, I still think trans girls, they are a version of a man, but they can still be classed as a woman, which is a bit tricky, but yeah, yeah. Molly? Um, I'll say the same answer. I think, I think what constitutes as a woman is the energy that you give off and that you want to put out into the world. Hmm. So if being a woman or a female is a mindset, can your age also be a mindset? Can you choose to be, can you just say, I feel 14, which is a classifiable mental condition, by the way, of in it. So I, I will say, um, yes, I know people that act way younger than they actually are, and they love acting way younger than they actually are. And I know people that, you know, like act way older than they are, and they, you know, and they pride themselves in that. And I think. Okay, fair enough. So if a 35-year-old man claims he's 14, should we have any problem if he wants to have with another 14 year old. No, no, no. I'm not saying no, that you should. probably should have a problem. I think. <laughs> no, no. I'm not well, saying that they should be problem. able to have sex, but, but you, they but can, they who's can to say state, he's not 14. I feel 14. Right. They don't have to state that. Okay. Grid One Motorsports donated $200. The man who owns it paid oh. himself 1,3 mil a day last year. He loves feminism. Oh, okay. Today, men act in female can be better women than real women. Feminism has failed you. How can the patriarchy help that, you today? That was beautiful, Grid One. Thank you. Appreci appreciate he's it. Uh, yeah, he's a. He's, yeah. Um, so, going but, back. But if your identity can is an energy or a feeling that can change, why would it be wrong for a 35 year old to say he's 14? Therefore, because he's not. But then, how is someone who has male parts? <laughs> A woman, if he's not I feel a woman, like that's two different things. It's Why? It's a, it's a mindset. Isn't it? time. Your age isn't a mindset. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, but, like, but then why is why is your sex or your gender a mindset and your because, age isn't? I don't know which one is which. One of you could probably well, say, sex, but sex and do gender. Do you agree? Is at least acknowledge that sex and gender are two separate that, things. So that's what I was going to say. There are zero genders, two sexes, and infinite personalities. 
Well, okay. Well, gender okay. doesn't exist. No. What do you mean? Okay. Sex does. So the parts you're born with is who you are. How does gender not exist? So it's, it's a 1960s clinical term largely made out of the Academy of John clinical? Money and Alfred Kinsey and many postmodern child psychiatrists, many of whom, by the way, were not really great people, but we don't have to go into that. But gender is a, a new term of the last 50 or 60 years. So, yeah, but it still exists. But personalities exist. We can agree with that. Proclivities or interests or likes exist. So Do by that definition, then you're, if you're a woman or a man, is your energy. It is your personality. Well, yeah, you're, the, the goal or what used to be the case is the vast, vast, vast majority, 99.9% .9 of all people, their biology and their reality or their, how they viewed their reality, I should say, were in alignment. And now that's not so much the case. So the people are, first of all, there's many elements to this. People are told that they can become something they can't. So they go on a very, very um, damaging, self-destructive pattern of medical interventions that even if you're pro-trans, you have to acknowledge that you know, a hysterectomy at age 17 is not exactly an easy surgery. I don't for, think anyone at 17 should be altering their body. Oh, but. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, it's just it's happening right now. At a ra Thousands of young kids across the country are getting um, what is called gender affirming care, gender affirming care but it's irreversible care or damage. Care surgeries? Both. So puberty blockers and hormone There's blockers. There's thousands of kids that are getting hysterectomies across no, the United States. No, thousands of kids are getting puberty blockers or hormone blockers. So hormone blockers or puberty blockers. Yeah, Probably even more, tens could, of thousands. You could stop using and, those. Though, and as far as breast reduction surgery or hysterectomies, we don't know the number, but I'll even say it's probably only a couple dozen. It's probably, you're right, it's probably not thousands. Right. But it's any, we don't know the exact numbers, but an estimate is anywhere between ten to 15,000 minors and is growing are currently receiving monthly doses of hormone replacement theory, oh. estrogenic th uh, therapy. Yeah, you know. but you can stop those and be like... Well, that's the question, right? Uh, there's a lot of detransitioners that are speaking out that are not able to... Pop, you know, puberty is not an assembly line that you could just push a button and well, restart. That is a increasingly disproven scientific theory right now. Chloe Cole is the, one of the most famous detransitioners who she's in her 20s and she was sold a bill of goods and when she was 16 she said I think I'm a man and she went on a very very aggressive regimen of hormone blockers and puberty blockers um, and she has huge regret and hopefully one day she'll be able to have you know have children again but it gets back to a question of can so I'm just making a point though that these these ideas have consequences it's more than just a silly question oh what is mm -hmm. a woman that if you can't answer it, or at the very least say that you should allow minors to become adults before they make these decisions, then, and this is not a small thing, the quote unquote gender affirming care. We know that in California, you have to be 18 years old to get a tattoo. Mm -hmm. And yet 14 year olds can go to what we call a doctor and get a highly aggressive hormone replacement therapy treatment, sometimes without even notifying their parent. I and all of these are woman. ramifications of the inability to answer very simple biological questions. I would be interested in seeing your exact like study or citation for when it comes to like puberty blockers because I know a lot of people, or not a lot of people, there's a lot of people who end up on puberty blockers not because they're necessarily trans but because they're going through puberty too early and there are clear like negative side effects and consequences of let's say like a 10 year old girl getting her that's period. A, that's a separate I, you're right. That's, yeah, but that it's used right. on cis children. I think like what you're talking but about it, is precocious puberty. But it's, so. it's not used on perfectly healthy, physically able-bodied children, right? Mm -hmm. So to, there's a great book that I'll... I guess we have Modest to Modest Hikima donated $200. Charlie, sorry you had to travel to California for the show. My boy did you dirty by putting you next to the demon, WTF? I don't think Beautiful you're a demon, life. by the way. Props on the oh, new Rick Rickson. Okay, well, maybe you are a demon. Make you see you are brain dead. Sad. Sad. All right. See, I, Modest okay. Kama could see what, you in the what, chat. I, I will just, I'll reference one book, and she's a non-political doctor. Her, doctor's doc, her name is Dr. Miriam Grossman. It's a book called Lost in Transnation. She has, she has treated, not just theorized. She's a clinician and a physician, not just someone who writes abstract medical journals. And she is one of the most outspoken people against what is called gender affirming care. And she, she's treating hundreds of kids that are now so damaged by this. So I know detransitioners exist, but what do you say to the thousands of trans people that actually report happiness and, and being healthy after they receive gender affirming care? Don't, don't doubt that in the short term, testosterone therapy te from someone who has a fair amount of testosterone, it can, act, it can make you feel confident. It can make you feel better in your skin. That is not a lasting effect, though. Is that think, but it is for some people. Well, well you'd be, I, the suicide rate, I can't say that word. Um, this, sorry, the self-harm rate 
after eight to 10 years actually goes up. It nearly doubles. And we're still studying it. That's the other point is that I'm not gonna throw around a lot of studies here. Um, and they, they very well might be right. It might have helped them individually, but l let me give you an example. If a medication is on the market and it harms one in 250,000 people, for example, Robitussin. You guys ever take Robitussin? No. No, it's a cough thing. It's, mm. you know, they, they, they found that one of their lots of Robitussin last week might have been contaminated and they did a massive recall, right? And it was so it, 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 just a whisper of it, okay? The point that is in medicine, the first rule used to be first do no harm. And the that fact still is right. No, they've changed the it. The Hippocratic so. Oath. It's, they've changed it. Yeah, they have. Who's they? The American Medical Association and a lot of the the medical institutions. Um, it's they've similar, been but it's not by, the same. They've by like woke ideology. Well, you'd be surprised actually. The med the medical industry has been taken over by a lot of radical. All forces. doctors are woke now. Well, for example, I mean, when they were giving monoclonal antibodies in the city of New York, they were prioritizing people based on the color of their skin. Uh, wow. Black individuals in New York got monoclonal antibodies above their white counterparts. Was but it based on the color of their skin or like maybe their background related to like their socioeconomic status? It was, it was it, racial. Um, but I don't want to get too deep into that yeah. rabbit hole. But the point that I'm just trying to make is that in medicine in particular, you must have a cautious approach, even if there were pluses and positives, which might very well be true. If there's even a 1%, a 2% adverse event, you pull the drug immediately because you first do no harm. If there's something that is actively damaging a society, and it's now a certifiable um, fact that we see thousands of young kids are being told that they can transition, when in reality they have other underlying issues that we should address. Depression, trauma, anxiety, or they're on the autism spectrum disorder, and they get mislabeled on whether a TikTok video or some sort of other thing makes them feel as if they might have you know, a transgender issue I when agree. they very well might have other issues that need to be addressed. One in 27 men are aut uh, young boys are autistic. Anyway, sorry, I don't mean oh, no, to- No, to totally, totally fine. Yeah. I just had a quick question for you two since you guys had pretty strong positions on this. Can men get pregnant? Wow, I think I love that question. I, I, I really want to follow up it. Can men get pregnant? Well, it's a question that um, we all know the answer. It's impossible anyway. Well, if, if you want to get like a baby as a man and you feel you you can go out there and adopt a child yeah i think that is the best thing if if you adopt a child the child becomes your child okay because you are in charge in the day and day running of the child you know providing for the child clothing the child and everything so you can adopt the child but i don't believe a man can get pregnant and i think i i get where charlie is coming from you know this puberty blockage is something that i don't advise anyone to indulge in because the lady said what are those people that block their puberty because puberty comes early? I feel it does not matter. People experience their puberty late. They don't force their puberty to come. And people experience it way too early. I, I feel if, if your body starts experiencing those change, then let it experience it. Because if your body can't handle it, it won't accept it. So as far as your, your body has started experiencing those change, your body is capable of, you know, um, um, accommodating you know that change and i think that is what everyone should look out for you know believe that yes whatever change is happening in my body i can accept it you know because i see people um transforming you know taking puberty block um blockers so that they won't experience puberty because maybe they are they are a lady and they want to feel like a man and some of them are men they want to feel like ladies so they try to block this puberty and start acting like the gender they prefer to be seen at but i feel you can cheat nature you know someone was telling me that there's this lady that has been blocking her puberty for um i think almost like for like almost 10 years now and she she just got pregnant because she she stopped using you know uh, what's it called her puberty um what's it called blocker and you can imagine she has this the beard she has the butte arm and all and she's pregnant the thing is you can cheat nature so you can try to block it you can try to avoid it but the moment you stop taking it, nature will take over. That is it because that is what your body is constructed to be. You're, you're constructed to be a woman. You're built to be a woman. Your internal organs are all wired to be a woman. So it does not matter how you try to prevent it. It's just like, um, let's say, two countries trying, like, that hate each other so, so much. But someone is in between there trying to make them have peace. The moment that person is no longer present, they will go to war and fight because that is what they've been harboring in their heart. That is it. it it's, it's, it's just the way like our body operates. So no matter how we try to 
avoid it, no matter how we try to shy away from it, no matter how we try to hide it, no matter how we try to feel like yes, this thing is working. The moment nature has the opportunity to prove itself, it will definitely prove itself. I just I love this so so much, and I love the fact that you know um, the lady were able to contribute. You know they were saying their their parts and their mind what they think about um, feminism. And to me, I feel feminism is giving equal rights to both male and female. You know, rights to do the right to be employed, right to vote. You know, political rights, social rights, economical rights, um, rights. And I feel that is it. That is how it's supposed to be. You know, um, we are born equal. Okay, the way a man came to this world is the same way a lady came to this world. So I don't see any reason why. Um, one party should be given a, 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 an upper hand. We already know how ladies have been treated at home, you know, especially when you are in a family whereby you have, like, let's say, two boys before the lady come it comes in. The lady is treated with so much care, so much, like, because she has brother that will pamper her, she has a father that will pamper her, and she has a mother that will always want her to be around her because, you know, at least the mother have someone else that has a woman. Uh, it, it, it's also happened when you know, they have a whole lot of girls in the family, then let's say a boy just came in, you know, just you give birth to a boy. Everyone will want to, you know, pamper the guy because, you know, he's, he's like the junior among them. So it, it, it both ways. But I, I don't like the idea whereby um, because we are both doing the same work, then you pay me different because I'm, I'm a lady. It's, to me, I feel it's not fair because as far as I can put in the work, I can also receive the pay. So if, if 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 we are doing the same work, then pay us equally. I think that is what it's supposed to be, and I, I think that is what is happening now because you know this the idea of feminism is, is 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 not even gradually fading away. It has faded away because now employer give maternity leave to women. So if if you give birth, they give you a space of three months or to to regain yourself before coming back to work. And I think it wasn't so before. Formerly employers you know avoid employing women because of this um, maternity leave, but now they are they are they are. They're not doing it. They feel like yes, they're all human. We are all human. So if if this is their their what it takes to keep them around, I prefer to get someone that is qualified for the job than get a particular gender simply because I'm trying to avoid um a certain leave. I think that is what we need to look out for. We need to look out for competence. So if this person is competent enough to do this work, it does not matter the gender. The person needs to be employed. So that is that is it. Anyway, I, I love this so much and I'm, I'm sorry for letting this video, you know, go through without saying anything like I, I don't want to distract anyone. So that is why I allowed the video to play through before I, I gave my um, contribution to it. If this is the first time visiting the channel, click on the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button. Thanks for watching and remain blessed.